What's up everyone? Today we're going to be doing another review and today's review is going to be on the Atlas Masterline HO Scale Gunderson Multimax Auto Rack. This one is decorated for the Kansas City Southern. So we do have this bright red box and we do have the window on the front so you can see the model. A little bit of history on the side of the box tells you about it. Here's the product number, barcode, road number. And then this side of the box has all the features and uh, just what you can expect from the model. And then the other side does have uh, the same product line. So <clears throat> we'll go ahead and take the outer shell off. Model comes in a two-part plastic, hard plastic shell, soft plastic liner. We'll go ahead and take the model out. And then on the underside of the box is some warranty information, repairs if you have any issues, and the warranty registration card. And then we do have <clears throat> an exploded parts diagram. So We'll go ahead and get the model on the turntable and we'll go ahead and go through some of the details, do a little scoring, and then give you some guys some run by shots. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so if you saw in the beginning, these cars were introduced by Gunderson in 2013, and this allows them to be able to swap between a buy level and a tri level. So it's a lot more flexibility for the railroads and the manufacturers, and they're built on 89 foot specially designed cars. And you'll usually see them in general manifests, maybe at the beginning of an intermodal train and a few set of cars or they can be run as a solid unit train. And they said there's over 10,000 in service and you definitely see a lot of these. So we do have the Kansas City Southern model here. We'll go ahead and just go through some of the side view details. We do have a side ladder right here, separately applied. We do have a bunch of these brackets that kind of hold in those, those aluminum painted plastic screens. We do, uh, if you can get a close look on this, there's a bunch of little details right there. A lot of intricate details, a lot of little divots. So, looks really good. Um, <clears throat> we do have some more little brackets right here, and then we do have the brake lever, and then we do have the slack adjuster running to the brake cylinder and piston on the other side. And then we do have another step ladder right here. So, we'll go ahead and reposition the car. This car is pretty big, so it's kind of maxing out my turntable, so we'll have to kind of readjust between all these shots. All right, so we're over on the B end. You can tell because we do have the brake lever right here, which is not on the other side. So this is the actual B end, and there's not much differences between the A and the B end. But we do have a KD scale coupler, metal coupler, looks really good. We do have grab irons here, here, and then on the two sides, you can just barely see them separately applied, look really good. Do we have the cutler, cut lever, and the support brackets for those? Looks really good, it's tied to the underside right there. Uh, <clears throat> we do have a nice non-operational plastic door, a lot of good printing right here, a lot of minuscule details. We do have the continuity stripes right there and there. They're non-reflective, but still painted on in a different color, yellow from the actual TTX scheme. And we do have the brake hose right here, and we do have the angle cock that goes to the underside right there. Overall, looks pretty good. We'll kind of show you guys a little bit but so all right we'll go ahead and move to the underside of the car and just show you that and then give you a quick top view all right so we are looking at the underside of the car and you can see we have all the brake line air hoses right here looking really good separately applied and in a black different color we do have the brake line coming down goes on the underside of the car and goes to the air reservoir and the triple valve we also do have a support bracket right there and then <clears throat> airline comes back up. You can see it goes under the underside of the frame and goes out this way. We do also have the brake levers. So we got one right here and right here. And you'll be able to see those just barely just because they kind of flip up towards the underside of the wheels. We do have the brake piston and the brake lever support with the slack adjuster, like we mentioned in the first shot. And overall looks pretty good. A lot of detail on these draft boxes. Don't know if you'll be able to see it. Kind of. Uh, you'll have to remove the brake line, this black piece right here, if you want to adjust your coupler. But overall, looks really good, good detail. Kind of show you guys down here while we're looking at the trucks. These are the 28-inch wheels, and they do have the prototypical low center of gravity trucks. Looks like they're specially made for these cars, so a lot of nice detail coming out of Atlas. We'll go ahead and just show you the top side. Not a whole lot on there, but it does have that nice... Aluminum painted, we do have a little bit of rivet detail. 
a little bit hard to see, but overall looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll get some weight and show you the guys the couplers next. All right, so we got the scale out. The length of this car was 12 and 3 8 inches. So the NMRA recommended weight is 7.19 ounces. So we'll go ahead and throw it on. And we got 7.83 ounces. A little bit hard to see in the camera view. Scroll over to grams and it's 223 grams. But not exactly sure what the NMRA recommended weight in grams is, but in ounces it was definitely over. So the grams should be over as well. All right, so we are looking at the A end of the coupler. Go ahead and move it close. Looks like it's a little bit low. Go ahead and move over to the B end. All right, so we're on the B end. Slack adjuster's on the other side. And it looks like, yep, yeah, just a little bit low as well. So both couplers a little bit low. Pretty manageable though. I would say less than 25% low, maybe 10%. So, you know, a little bit low, but low. All right, guys, so we're just gonna go through the scoring real quick and we'll have some run by shots while we're doing this. So throw up the rubric, make sure that everything looks good and what I'm scoring out of. Packaging overall looks good, no issues with that. Accuracy, I checked a few photos of nearby cars in that range, didn't see any issues. Paint, I'm gonna take off one point, and that's because there's a little bit of softening of the paint on the lettering and the road number. And I don't really like it when the details are mismatched with the actual paint color. So they are molded into a yellow, but it's kind of an off yellow, so I think it looks a little bad, especially on a $100 freight car. So I'm gonna take a point away from that. Details overall, it's pretty good details. There's not a lot of details on the car, which makes it difficult to kind of gauge. So you kind of got to have everything. But I am going to take away two points because this is a $100 freight car and it doesn't have etched metal parts. That being said, the plastic ones do look pretty good. And usually if you have etched metal and it looks bad, it's a lot more noticeable than, say, plastic that looks good. So I'm going to take two points from that. Just feel that overall it should have, you know, some of that higher level detail. All right, so for couplers, trucks, and wheels, I'm gonna take away one point for having no roller bearings, caps. On a $100 freight car, you should kind of have roller bearing caps. I would normally take away two or three points for this, but seeing as this is kind of a special wheel size, this 28 inches, and kind of a new style truck for the specific car, I don't think it's worth taking away two or three points for a one-off truck design. Now, if this was something that just used, you know, your Barber S2s or something like that, where it's a more standardized, truck and you're not using roller bearings on a hundred dollar freight car i'd take away more points but just for that you know only one point and then i'm going to take away one point for both sides being low it's really close but i think between the two sides both having a little bit low it's worth one point taking away operations there's a little bit of a body wobble i tried tightening up the trucks and i can't really get it um, just with some basic maintenance so i feel like we're gonna have to take away a point for that just to kind of get the operations away Another thing I will say just about the operations, just so you guys know that these cars are a little bit tricky and a little bit delicate. So um, if you have, you know, some narrow freight cars or some longer freight cars right next to these, you might have some issues. I'm not going to take away a point just because it wasn't consistent issues on my layout, but just notice that I did have some, some minor issues and you might have to toy around with either some longer couplers and make sure you're just kind of being mindful of the cars are in and around the train when you're running these cars. Overall value, I think it's about a nine out of 10. Overall, it's a pretty good value. The actual MSRP is about $100, but I found it, it's about closer to 65 when I actually paid for it, which is a pretty big discount, but at the end of the day, it's still a $65 to $100 freight car, so it's very expensive, and there's a few issues with it. It wasn't you know knocked out of the park, so I'm gonna take away one point. And then miscellaneous, just like I said in the previous one, you know, $100 freight car, there's a few slight issues overall i think it's about a 9 out of 10 so overall pretty good but you know just a few issues that they could have done better all right so when you add up all the scores you get 92 out of 100 which is about an a minus on a report card overall a pretty good car this is the first atlas car that i have reviewed and it's the 10th car that i've reviewed in the series so 92 puts it about fourth place tied with a few other cars you know overall pretty good so you know, there's just a few little things that they could fix and make this car a little bit better. And then maybe a little bit changing on the prices, but they have to make their money too. So would I buy this car again? And that's a maybe. If this was, if this car was produced by itself, it yeah, um, I would go with more of these cars just because, you know, it's a decent price, decent details, overall pretty good. That being said, just with the timing of the current events, another car of this exact model is being produced here in about three months. So that's kind of, 
we're going to wait to see what that manufacturer produces and kind of go with the better of the two cars. So that's just my kind of final thoughts on it. You know, would I buy it again? Yeah, but just going to wait to see what happens with that. So uh, tell me what you guys think. I know you could purchase four of these. So you could purchase the KCS one that we have on site. We do have the CN one available and then the Canadian, Canadian Pacific and BNSF are on their way. Kind of a split shipment, but um, you can purchase those here in a few weeks. So tell me what you guys think. If you guys agree with this, what you thought about it, comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.